Today the most used font formats are TrueType and OpenType, but many if not most type users have misconceptions about these terms. TrueType continues to have a rather bad reputation. It's understood as an outdated Windows format that should be avoided if possible. OpenType, on the other hand, is seen as that shiny new format which supposedly made fonts platform compatible and should be preferred. But that isn't really true, so time to shed some light on this subject. Despite what some people think, TrueType is not a Windows thing. In fact, it's an Apple thing. In the 1980s, desktop publishing emerged and PostScript was an important part of that. And with PostScript came PostScript fonts. But when Apple later built support for such scalable fonts into their operating system, they didn't went with PostScript fonts, but instead developed their own format, which was called TrueType and later was also given to Microsoft. And until today, almost all system fonts that come with your Windows or Mac operating system are TrueType based. Adobe then made their PostScript Type 1 font standard more open and all through the 1990s both formats existed side by side. PostScript fonts were more used for professional graphic design and print productions and TrueType fonts for everything else. And that's where the bad reputation of TrueType fonts come from. Those large font packages with poor quality were usually in TrueType format and aimed at consumers. And those fonts would sometimes not work at all on the very early PostScript raster image processors. But that was like 20 years ago and is not an issue anymore today. So we had these two competing font formats all throughout the 1990s. But what made things really complicated was that both operating systems required different versions of each format. And one reason for that was the way macOS stored font information. A Mac file can consist of a data fork and a resource fork, and font data was stored in the latter. And because of that, you couldn't use the Mac fonts on Windows and vice versa. You couldn't even copy a Mac font directly to Windows without losing its content instantly. But this changed with the introduction of macOS 10 in 2001. Since then, macOS X directly supports and uses DataFork TrueType fonts, and it was this step that made fonts platform compatible. So any TTF font will work on Windows and Mac OS X since 2001. So there's really no reason to stay away from TrueType based fonts anymore. In fact, because software companies such as Apple use mostly TrueType fonts themselves, bugs appeared more often for PostScript flavored fonts in the recent years. But what is OpenType? Many understand TrueType and OpenType as different formats, and I can't really blame them. The names and the file extensions TTF and OTF suggest exactly that. But it's not really true. OpenType wasn't a new format, but an extension of the TrueType standard. And it's a superset of it. So wherever there is OpenType support, there is also TrueType support. And a TrueType font will usually comply with the OpenType specifications. So in many situations, it doesn't even make, it make sense to try to differentiate between the two, because the differences are just in the optional features. An OpenType font can have a digital signature, an OpenType font can have OpenType features like automatic ligature replacement, but unless these features are actually used, the format itself doesn't make much difference. So it also doesn't make sense to ask about a conversion from TrueType to OpenType, as people often do. There would be nothing to gain unless the font maker itself actually extends the fonts and puts such OpenType features in. But a plain conversion from TrueType to OpenType is neither necessary nor helpful. Now what about PostScript? You can think about TrueType flavored OpenType fonts as TrueType fonts with additional features. 
but as a successor to the old PostScript Type 1 fonts, there are now also PostScript flavored OpenType fonts. Their internal structure is mostly identical to that of TrueType flavored fonts. The main difference is the part that deals with the actual character outlines and here there are now PostScript outlines put in. And that brings us to our last point. It seems simple. TTF means TrueType font, OTF means OpenType font. But the truth is, these file extensions don't say much and can instead be misleading. The OTF extension was introduced with OpenType and is usually used for PostScript flavored OpenType fonts. But not necessarily. A TrueType flavored font can use this extension as well. So we can't really tell from the file extension if we deal with a PostScript or TrueType flavored OpenType font or if it even contains OpenType features. The TTF extension, on the other hand, can both be used for regular TrueType fonts as well as TrueType flavored OpenType fonts. This allowed TrueType flavored OpenType fonts to be backwards compatible. Apps that could deal with regular TrueType fonts and expected the TTF extension could work with the newer fonts and would just ignore the additional OpenType features. So there are technical reasons why those file extensions exist and why they are used this way, but unfortunately from a user's point of view they are not very helpful. What you can tell is that fonts with either the TTF or OTF extension are platform compatible and can be used in most apps. That's it for this time. For more typography videos, feel free to subscribe to this channel or visit the video section on typography.guru.